Hey, I've got three mini bikes here and I built the mini bike frames myself using the step-by-step -step instructions in this video build series. Now there isn't much left in this video build series, so I'm going to be taking you through sort of how I have these mocked up. Same frame with a little bit of differences in between. Copyright free music, here we go. Bam 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 mini bike bam 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 mini bike bam 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 mini bike bam 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 mini bike mini bike oh bam 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 mini bike bam 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 mini bike bam 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 mini bike bam 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 mini bike bam 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 mini bike bam 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 mini bike bam 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 mini bike with part four of the custom homemade mini bike build. So I've got three different mini bikes over here. You haven't seen them all throughout the build series. Part one of the build series was just how to make a custom frame jig. Part two was showing you how to use a frame bender and a frame roller, getting your first frame build. Big part three then was covering a lot of the metal plates. As you can see here, I've got one, two, three mini bikes. That's right, three mini bikes to show you the different parts that you can put on there and different options that you can really have to get a custom homemade mini bike. So I have my custom gussets fit and I'm gonna be mounting them on the sides. Gonna be doing a one and a half inch weld here, one and a half inch weld here and here. Just gonna be giving it a little bit of rigidity. This is a pretty thick frame, so it doesn't need it too much. Really, this gusset is gonna be for show. So I've got a little bit to clean up. You can see I've got some spatter from the weld, but I take two of these wishbone pieces, one for the top, one for the bottom. I'm gonna come in with these little wishbones and I'm gonna slip them down and then bend them into place to conform to the frame. I'm gonna weld them up and this is gonna be my top and bottom for a rigid neck support. I'm gonna weld the top on. I'm gonna weld just the joint of the neck, weld the bottom on, come back here and then weld over the top on a secondary layer. need to make a kickstand. Hold the bike upright when we're not using it, right? So a kickstand is pretty easy, only uses a few simple parts, and the thing is that you're going to want to have it snap. So what we're going to need is a metal plate that's going to weld onto the mini bike. You'll need your kickstand part itself for the, for the foot, the foot of the kickstand. You'll need a spring, two parts that are going to come out to hold the spring in place, and then a bolt just to keep everything together. To start with the plate that mounts to the mini bike, this is my overall shape. I have a 3 8 inch hole which is going to have a bolt going through it up to the kickstand itself. On the top I've got a quarter inch hole that I tap with a 5 16 inch, ooh, NC18, NC18 5 16 tap which goes on the top here and then I take a 5 16 inch bolt and I'm going to be bolting that in place. Now later I'm going to be coming back and welding things in place. I've got to wrap up the rest of the kickstand, but I'm going to show you the placement here of where I'm going to be mounting that on just so you can get a feel of what the angle is going to be at. It's not straight up and down. It's actually coming out at about a 35 degree angle, and I've got two places that I can mount that. One up here kind of centered on the frame, and one a little bit further back. I've actually chosen with my other builds here, I've measured everything out, so I've got kind of the rollers set up so I can sit on them, see where things will play out. I've got it measured from the back of the frame here, 13 and a quarter inches up to where that, where that kickstand be welded in. Now, I've noticed that when I put the kickstand on there, I actually have to angle it properly. So I'll tack it on the front, tack the, only the front first, put the kickstand on there, play with the angle that you want it, position it properly, and then do your second or third tacks, and then weld it into place. Moving on to the leg, for the leg, what I need is a round tube, and I'm just using a 1 8 inch .125 that I'm using for the rest of the frame. This is just an extra part. I'm gonna be using a one inch by four inch plate, and this is seven gauge steel. I'm gonna be bending that up at the top. I'm gonna to be looking at having a U shape for my leg, weld it on, and then I'm gonna line everything up for the right height cut the bottom a little bit, shave it down, and weld the foot, uh, foot into place. Which should give me a kickstand that looks more like the manufactured ones. Now in order to make this U plate up at the top, what I'm gonna be doing is taking a metal bar, one inch by four inch, I'm gonna be making a mark at 1.25 inches, an inch and a quarter, I'm gonna put that into a vise, 
and I'm going to be bending it starting at the top is where I hold it to make my bend. And this gives you a rough shape about like so. Once you have the shape like so, you're going to open that bench vise all the way up to where you can now put your piece into the bench vise. At this point, I'm making sure that my two points are aligned directly to one another, perpendicular to the parts of the bench vise, and I'm just going to start cranking this down. When I start cranking this down, what should happen is I'm getting my U-shape. As I'm bending that U-shape, I don't want to actually pinch the two sides together, and that's where our spacers are going to come into play. This is where I need to take two spacers, each seven gauge, they will later become a foot or another part. I'm going to put them into the vise here to prevent this from being crushed all the way flat. And I'm just going to keep going. So now I have my U-shape in there that's going to be welded onto the leg and I'm going to be able to cut that to size and drill it out. Once you have this welded together, I, I use the 3 8 inch drill bit and that 3 8 inch drill bit is going to go right through the side of one part and right, right through the side of the other part. Now you can even do this before you weld, putting it right back in the vise and drilling it through. Make sure you use cutting oil or some sort of a lubricant so you keep your bit sharp. Now that you have it welded in place on the top, I'm going to come in here with a quarter inch drill bit. I'm going to drill a small hole in the side and I'm going to be able to tap that with our 5 16 inch once again. I'm going to take the same size bolt and I'm going to be able to put that right into place. Now I've got the bottom part with the leg almost complete without a foot and I've got the top part ready to go. So what I'm going to do is take that 3 8 inch bolt on the top. I'm going to use a small washer like so and I'm going to put the washer in there just to keep it a little bit more snug and I'll be able to make my kickstand parts go together. For the foot pegs, I'm going to be taking a 16 inch long rod. For the foot pegs, I'm going to take a 16 inch long rod and I'm going to be marking 6 inches in and 10 inches in. I'm going to be making a couple little X's here. I'm going to be coming then to the frame and marking 2 inches up off of the base of the bottom of the frame making a mark along that line, centering it up and making a mark there and a dot there. So those two dots here and here should line up with my frame directly. There you go. In order to make the additional marks for the cuts for the foot pegs, I know that my frame tube is one inch wide. So I'm going to make half inch on this side, half inch on this side, a total of one inch in length, half inch and half inch, again, one inch in length. And I'm actually just going to kind of eyeball it. So I'll put those two marks, everything lined up, just kind of eyeball it, paint the marks on at about where I think everything's going to be, take a look from a few different directions, and I'm going to be starting my cuts. I do have a tubing notcher, but since not everybody has a tubing notcher, and they are very straightforward to use, I'm not going to give a how-to on how to use the tubing notcher, I'm just going to use an angle grinder. So I've got a couple notches that I just cut out with the angle grinder and I should be able to come in here, size them up right at my point. So they fit on there pretty snug and now I'm going to weld them into place. So what's better than building stationary foot pegs? Building adjustable foot pegs so you can change the width a little bit wider, a little bit more narrow. You can change up the foot peg itself to swap out for something that's going to be a little bit more narrow, a little bit wider, a little bit race oriented, a little bit more sleek, designer, whatever it is. So let's pretend that we've got our 16 inch bar here, and let's pretend it's 16 inch, and have it mounted on the mini bike. Now that we saw how to get it mounted on the mini bike, we're going to see how to put the secondary part together. We're going to start with a 3 inch by 1 inch mounting bracket. It's going to have a couple of holes drilled in there next to center. I should have the templates up soon. I told you guys I was going to be getting those together. And what I'm going to be doing is coming in here with a cutting wheel on an angle grinder. I'm going to be coming at the 1 inch marker and I'm just going to be making two slots. These are going to help me bend the thing into place. So to get from 
here to here, I'm gonna be using this guy right here and this right here. Now what I wanna do is take a five to seven inch piece of tube. This is one and one quarter inch that the wall thickness is 0.125. So that means that the inner diameter is one inch. One inch is the size of metal we've been working with. It also keeps it very strong. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that our foot pegs have no play in them. We're gonna to to make sure that our foot pegs will actually be able to take hundreds of pounds of weights. Once we have that proper gauge steel in place, we'll be able to mount these two pieces together and come up with something that looks a little bit like nya. Once we have something that comes together that looks a little bit like nya, we'll want to make sure that we have a very hard, strong foot peg. We're not going to want to work with anything that's going to be limp or floppy. So we'll have to make sure that we have a weld in place on the back side that secures the foot peg, keeping it upright. Also, check out minibikeapparel.com. Check out this shirt right here. Awesome guy, awesome company, awesome shirts, minibikeapparel.com. Now we have, boom, foot peg, boom, slide adjustability on our foot peg, and we can put it at different angles. If later on we want to change the type of foot peg that we have to something that's a little bit more narrow, I need like three arms to do this, that's a little bit more narrow at the base, we can easily swap out that end bar and put on a different one. So I welded a seam line on the inside for the foot peg so that when everything bends up into place, it's going to hit a stopping point and remain straight. Now I need to actually measure with the foot peg in there and make sure that it's going to rest at the correct place. I'm going to slowly shave this down and test that foot peg until I get a good straight fit. All right, now you can see my welding line here and you can see that everything on the foot peg is nice and secure. Don't forget to weld the foot onto the leg of the kickstand and then you can put this on your frame. So I've got a kickstand, right? That's pretty cool, but there's only one big problem. I need a nubbins. Why do I need a nubbins? You can see here the torque converter on the engine that I'm using sticks out pretty far and I need to be able to get my leg around that when I flip the kickstand down. So you can see here my Yamaha R3 foot peg has this little nubbins on the front of the kickstand. Flip, 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 flip. And there you have one steaming hot nubbins. So now as you can see, I have everything aligned and level with one another. I'm gonna use a self-driven punch and I'm gonna be punching a hole where I can drill through and bolt these together. I'm gonna to be making sure that I've got oil on the drill bit. I'm gonna be drilling these all the way through now with this in place, carefully making sure that they don't twist along the way. From a dimensional standing, this frame was designed to hold a lot of power. Now this is the 18 horsepower 440cc Duramax and it fits in there nice and snug, but it does fit in there. I've got over here set up for a torque converter and a full electrical system on an engine riser plate. You can see that it fits even with the jack shaft tabs in place. And this is gonna be your stock Predator engine. Has perfect clearances on there even with the riser. And then a built Predator engine as well is gonna be fitting in there nicely. Now there are a lot of things that are adjustable on here. I have two size wheels and two size rims. These are the smaller, the 15 inch tires, 20 inch tires over there. The adapter plate here is fit for the smaller brake caliper. This is more of a standard brake caliper that you find on Coleman mini bikes or Motovox, Mega Moto. They both work with this adapter plate in place. And then we've got <clears throat> larger forks, Coleman CT200 off-road forks that cost about $175. You can get them off of the Coleman Power Sports website. These are just gonna be your standard Megamoto or Motovox 
uh, fork. I got these from studsracing.com and they cost about $105 plus shipping. You gotta make sure that you also buy risers on there for your handlebars. This is a Mega Moto seat that I have in place here. I welded a little bar in place where it hooks in with the hooks. And then on the back part, I welded, I gotta move the lights out of the way. I'm gonna be looking at showing how to do street legal build. That's future, still looking into that one. I'll be drilling a couple holes in here and mounting the seat in there. This is for a very easy one. Now I bent this, this is just another one inch by uh, 0.125. I bent it 275 degrees and then it kind of bent back and I shaved it in place. And then I'm gonna be making a couple more supports in here. Now my other seat in here is actually an adjustable seat where I can move it up or down for a little bit more aggression. I'm gonna pull this bar out right now. Uh, I believe it's Honda CR50 or CRF50 seat and I have a few plates in place that I needed to create a bridge. I needed this bridge and I realized over time is when I sit on it, a lot of the, the weight gets distributed distributed in this direction. When it gets distributed in this direction, I have to have something that holds these two parts of the seat together because it's gonna be pulling on everything up here. What I really wanna do is make sure that this engine is close to that sprocket, but it's a little bit difficult with the universal form or a, an older frame like this. So I found it RCF, this nice little innovative chain tensioner. And this chain tensioner mounts directly onto the engine. So I've got my chain guard, my clutch, my chain tensioner, and then I've got an additional chain tensioner back here. But this one is really just creating or removing some of that sine wave, removing some of the wobble from the chain and making it a lot more taut in there. I have a 30 series CVT and I've hooked up part of the electrical system, electric start, uh, I've got my mirrors, you've got to have mirrors, horn, horn, uh, blinkers. The big block build, I used a bobber seat. You can find a lot of these on Amazon. Like a lot of these parts are coming off of Amazon. Everything I showed you for the electric is coming off of Amazon. The brake kits, the brake parts, all of that stuff is Amazon. All of these handlebars. This one, the forks came off of Amazon and I detailed that in a uh, previous video. I made the sprocket myself. This is a 40 series CVT rims, rear rims that I'm using pretty consistently. And this one comes off of either Megamoto, they're listed as Megamoto, Megamoto Pro, Megamoto Max. I've got, all, I've got both of those mini bikes. Uh, or the Coleman RB200. And I got two of these rims from one online store, Coleman Power Sports, and then another rim from another online store. So they're accessible in a couple different places under a couple different names. This one, this one's a little doozy of a humdinger. Little interesting note to learn about the rims here is they actually come in two different sizes. If you notice, one is a little bit wider for the rim itself, but then the place for the sprocket and the brake are a little bit narrower by maybe one eighth of an inch on each side than the other one, which is narrower for the hub. So I'm not gonna go into spacer distances, but just keep in mind while you're making your spacers, the hub may be a little bit different. I just bought $700 worth of stuff from childishconcepts.com, including a Dakar 212cc engine that we're gonna be pitting head to head with a Predator 212cc engine. It's my birthday! Please consider subscribing, give me a like, but what I really want out of this build series is that I hope you learned something about the mini bike making process. So maybe you're overwhelmed by this whole do-it-yourself process, but great news for you. You can actually, if you just want to start with welding and testing your welds, there's a do-it-yourself mini bike frame kit, and there's actually two of them, uh, different frames from metalfabcreations.com. I recommend that as an awesome thing to check out. There's also rcfminibikes.com if you want to get a frame that's pre-built and put together. There's a micro mini, there's a micro drag kit, and then there's fbminibikes.com, which offers some drag mini bikes. So there are a few options out there if you just want to get a frame either welded together or one that you weld together yourself just so you can get into the, the frame building process and get yourself a custom mini bike. Whether this is going to be your first frame building project, your 100th, whatever it may be, I hope I give you some tips along the way. Check back on megoingfast.com. I'm going to get some templates online. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day.